All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Zhang. Uh, I'm from Beijing Normal University. Uh, and I'm going to be updating you on the uh, recent progress of the uh, 12 meter prototype being built at BNU. Um, so last year, uh, last year's, during last year's meeting, uh, Hai Xing and I gave a uh, sort of design uh, talk on the uh, on the basics of what this um, what this prototype is meant to do, and I'll just give a short update on on, on uh, what progress has been made since then. Let me just um, share my screen. Okay, so. Um, the purpose of the uh, of the prototype is to uh, to try the technologies, to test the technologies that will be useful for a, a high frequency detector, concentrating on the uh, thousands of hertz range, um, to be able to see the mergers and ring down phase uh, of binary neutron stars uh, coalescence. Um, and there are three main technologies that uh, we're looking to, to test out. Uh, one is uh, high power, of course. Uh, second is squeeze light. Um, and well, I won't go into details. I think everybody here um, are quite familiar with, um, with quantum noise. Um, and then also the, uh, the cav cavity resonance, especially using signal recycling sort of cavity. Um, you know, the, in order to accentuate uh, specific uh, frequency ranges, uh, in our case, will be the thousands of hertz. Um, and the first stage of the uh, of the experiment um, will be on this far left. Um, one arm. Well, actually, um, if you have any specific detailed uh, questions, um, I think Hai Xing uh, at Birmingham, as well as Meng Yao Wang, also at Birmingham, uh, will be the best person to ask. Um, and also uh, Hao Yu Wang uh, from Shanghai Institute of Technology will be, uh, will be an expert on this. Um, but I'll, since I'm giving the talk, I'll just briefly, uh, briefly say something as well. Um, the uh, one of the arms is actually uh, simulating differential output of the of the, uh, of the interferometer, and then the, uh, the second arm is actually uh, simulating the um, the signal recycling uh, cavity. Um, so the initial stage will be to test out how squeeze light work with this cavity resonance thing, uh, and then the second stage will probably turn off the squeeze light and turn up the uh, the power. Um, and just see how the controls work, uh, and then see how far uh, we can go in terms of building a, uh, a prototype, uh, a proper interferometer prototype, uh, sort of learn the ropes and, and, and see how much of the, uh, the newer technologies uh, we can incorporate. And hopefully the results will, will go into either upgrading the current ones or uh, contribute to the um, to the design of the, uh, of the next generation detectors. And one of them uh, might be this, uh, this thing. So, so the three kind of technologies are essentially the three that's uh, utilized in this, uh, in this design work, uh, but then it's Hai Xing, Huan, and, uh, and company. Um, so the ideal uh, design, uh, I was told it would be a 18 kilometer three fold, so six kilometer long, arm um, sort of dedicated high frequency detector uh, you would achieve better uh, better precisions um, than uh, even cosmic explorer in, in, in the targeted range uh, frequency range um, so right as for uh, as for the uh, the prototype itself um, this is this is where we have the uh, the space. Um, so this was a printing press uh, belonging to a publisher that's right next to Beijing Normal University. Um, but because printing apparently is is, is very uh, causes too much pollution, so they got kicked out of the uh, city center. Uh, 
So Beijing Normal University is able to rent this entire building uh, for lab space. Uh, the first uh, rental contract for five years has already lapsed, uh, but they're renewing it. And we think uh, uh, given all the work that's, that's put into this, uh, not just us, but also other departments, uh, so we're going to be, be able to hold it for a long time. Um, so this is the outside view, and we we have a quarter of the, uh, the ground floor, uh, the old factory space, um, which is which has a tall ceiling and has the ability to to carry a, a lot of heavy weight on the ground because uh, it used to be printing press there. Um, inside of this large glass windows. Uh, it looks like this. The floor plan is like this. So the empty space, uh, this is half of the first ground floor. Uh, th this picture is only half of the building anyway. Uh, the building is actually a, a quite a bit longer. Um, so the whole floor space, uh, this is roughly a thousand uh, meters squared. Uh, half of it goes to, uh, to the physics department, which is this, uh, this bit empty bit, and the, the filled-in bit belongs to us, um, to, to astronomy, um, and uh, the T-shaped uh, is obviously for the, uh, the 12 meter, um, and, it, and also we have a, uh, a computing center, um, it's mainly for, uh, for FAST, uh, the radio telescope, uh, they really need a, uh, some computing power to run more sophisticated algorithms to, to do data mining uh, and other studies. Uh, that's also us. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's also the, um, the gravitational wave and cosmology laboratory within the Department of Astronomy within uh, Beijing Normal University that's in charge of this. So, so I'm also, um, also in charge of, of building this. So, um, so all the all the controls and everything that needs computing space, uh, there's just going to be going to be a hole uh, in the wall, so that so all the wires is actually going to come into a proper uh, computing center. Um, so this is what it looks like uh, as of um, essentially as of now. Uh, this picture was taken at the end of last year. Um, so by the middle, so by September of last year, they finished the uh, foundational sort of decorative work, dividing up the space into the correct shape, um, getting the electricity and water and everything. Uh, so we have uh, electrical cables this thick coming in to both the, um, both the laser lab and also the computing center, of course. Um, so as soon as that's done, we began to, um, to sort of, um, improve the design of the uh, of, of the tank. So Haixing and Meng Yao basically uh, uh, redesigned the tank um, to be of this shape, especially uh, you can see some of the tanks open uh, on the side uh, like this. Uh, the reason being, although we have a six meter tall ceiling, it, it ended up uh, having been eaten somewhat by uh, water pipes from up, upstairs. Uh, they have chem chemistry uh, experiments uh, and apparently uh, they, they can't arrange the pipes some other way. So, um, so if the tanks open sideways, it will save us a lot of grief and that's the new design. And once all this uh, hard design work uh, went through, we put in orders for not just the tanks, but also essentially all of the major components of the prototype. Um, so the, uh, the bidding process ended uh, January this year and all the money has been paid uh, and a lot of the equipment have already been delivered um, over the summer and it's, it is continuing uh, at the moment. Um, as for the, uh, for the lab space itself, Obviously, uh, this foundational decorative decoration is not sufficient. We'll have to turn the whole place into a clean room, uh, 
uh, I, I don't know what's the uh, what's the proper word for it, but level a thousand uh, for the large space and one hundred. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't have to be one hundred, uh, but the, the mirror's life span uh, apparently, uh, according to Meng Yao's calculation, is uh, is square root of of, of the uh, of the cleanliness. Um, so we're aiming for 100 uh, in these two spaces, uh, the laser injection room and also a, a room for, uh, for making, basically making a sort of clean workshop for making stuff. Um, uh, there will be two space for people to, who, um, who, who visit or who uh, watches the, um, the experiment. Um, to, to, to have a rest in, and this is the ground floor, and then there's also a second floor of uh, uh, sitting room, uh, and there will be glasses um, so people can see into the lab without having to actually go in the lab and, and, uh, and cause problem with the cleanliness. Um, so all that decorative work, um, so we put in the uh, application to the university for this to go ahead quite a long time ago as soon as the uh, foundational work has been done um, but the permission as well as uh, there's, there's multiple rounds of um, uh, committee meetings where you have to convince uh, outside experts on whether it's viable whether the price is right whether uh, all sorts of things uh, and uh, at the end of at the beginning of July, uh, we managed to get a approval, so we have the money now. Uh, and also, as of mid uh, October, we have finished the bidding process to select the contractor. Um, so basically, this side of things uh, will move forward now, um, pending some building permits thing that we have to obtain, which uh, takes a bit of time because the building is too old and, and some plan floor plans are missing and stuff like that but whatever um, so the current expectation is that uh, as we uh, build the clean room the um, the tanks the tanks uh, will be the construction of the tanks will will finish in in about a month or, or less. Um, so the, the construction of the clean room and the moving in of the tanks and, and, and optical benches and everything heavy and, and that can't really fit through a door um, will happen um, sort of simultaneously, sort of. Um, uh, to be arranged uh, uh, in, 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 in alternating fashion. Um, and that should happen beginning of next year. And the, um, the building period on the contract is for three months, although that might get delayed, uh, depending on, on how well things go. Uh, so hopefully by the end, but by the middle of next year, 2021, uh, we'll have all the heavy equipments in place and by the uh, by September next year where the new term starts where uh, when Meng Yao uh, has joined us at BNU uh, hopefully uh, you know depending on how the pandemic goes um, uh, we would be able to start uh, carrying out experiments uh, so this so this timeline, um, despite pandemic, this timeline isn't actually delayed that um, that much. Um, so hopefully, uh, so at the uh, so at the end of this year, um, uh, we the project the, the program the uh, interdisciplinary program that funds this project. Um, would have finished, uh, and we, we sh really should have spent uh, all the money. Uh, we're, we're almost there, um, and we are hoping for other uh, for for a second phase of the same program. Uh, we we're applying for that, and um, it'll be hopefully the same amount of money. Uh, 
but we'll be able to, to use that to, um, uh, to keep the uh, experiments running uh, and sort of uh, cover the running costs and, and everything like that. Um, and also, on top of that, uh, there is, has been some new development in China uh, because quantum technology has really garnered a lot of attention from the uh, top echelons of the, uh, the country's leadership. Uh, the whole Politburo has been taking classes on, 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 on basic quantum technology to that extent. Uh, so, so there's a lot of money available now um, to the quantum institutes uh, throughout the country. Um, but they have the technology, but they don't have much science case where they can use this. Um, so we've received requests from the university, the Southern University of Science and Technology, as well, as, well as Shanxi University, um, to collaborate um, on this. Um, so, so there's scope for uh, expansion of the, uh, of the experiment. Uh, and of course, uh, if opportunities arise, uh, we might push for the uh, for the aforementioned uh, six kilometer uh, thing to be built in China, um, if, if that's at all uh, possible. Um, so lastly, let me just uh, just show you some pictures. Um, it's just for fun. Um, so. This first picture is basically me complaining. Uh, it's uh, the entire building uh, are full of labs, but for some reason the door, the gate uh, has been designed to be uh, just over one meter wide. So nothing can fit through and you can't even disassemble this, uh, this door. It's, um, it's stainless steel welded in, in, in place. Um, so when our optical bench arrived, um, some of the benches, uh, we have very long ones. We have one that's over three meters long uh, and, and quite wide as well. Uh, it has to be, you can't fit this through the door, so you're just gonna have to lift it up, uh, let it stand sideways, uh, which is kind of dangerous, uh, as you can imagine. If the casing breaks and stuff inside falls out, um, it's not gonna be a happy ending for anybody. Um, but you know, in China, uh, they uh, there's always a way to do things. Uh, with, so our contractor managed to find this um, this, this excellent people, um, very resourceful, uh, using a forklift to uh, to essentially uh, erect the uh, the thing up uh, sideways, and then placed a little little wheels underneath and and. And manage to sort of guide them, slide them in, roll them in, and then once they're inside, they have this uh, contraption to, uh, to to lower it down sideways, flat. Uh, so so essentially, that's where we're at right now. So all of this equipment are being stored in the in the server room and the um, the uh, while the um, the clean room is being built. Uh, and they will be moved into the clean room uh, as as the building happens, uh, and hopefully um, by the by, by the summertime, um, when the lab has the basic shape shape already in place, uh, and also when pandemic is under control because of the vaccine, hopefully uh, that uh, we can welcome a lot of you. Uh, who, uh, who might be interested to, uh, to come and take a look uh, to, uh, to visit us. Uh, and also, uh, talking about that, uh, I also want to mention that uh, on, on top of this space, uh, we will possibly get additional lab space um, from a old campus, an alternative campus of the, uh, of the National Astronomical Observatory of China, so they're, they're, they're subletting some of their space to, to Beijing Normal University, and we might get, get hopefully hundreds of square meters worth of 
lab space there, it's not going to be anything like this factory space. It, it will just be regular office building type of thing. Um, but uh, I put in a proposal, um, we'll pr we put in proposal to, um, to grab some of the space. Uh, so if you have any ideas for testing that can be carried out in a smaller lab, testing materials, uh, stuff like that. The proposal I put in is for, uh, is for testing out different uh, weird uh, sort of uh, uh, interferometer designs, the kind of things designers write papers about, but if they want to actually put them into a practice, uh, uh, try them out on, on, on a tabletop, uh, then uh, that, that's what's in the proposal, but it doesn't have to, once we get a space, we can do whatever we want with it. So if you have um, anything uh, that you, you're interested in, but you don't have the space or the resources, uh, as I said, due to the uh, collaboration with the other two universities, we might also have additional funding. Um, and also, be, also if, if, if we get the second phase um, of, of, of the uh, BNU funding as well, uh, then we might, have uh, a lot more resources um, to be able to expand the range of experiments that, uh, that we can do at BNU. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you have any ideas that you want to try out, uh, you know, uh, I think this particular meeting is going to, to have a discussion sessions. Uh, and and I, I think that those will be the perfect uh, opportunity um, to, to have further discussions. Um, so, um, looking forward to, uh, to talking to you all and stay safe in the meantime. Uh, see you, uh, in, in however many days time. Uh, goodbye.